When it comes to medicine, the most common prescription comes in a pill. Well, not anymore. Scientists are exploring the possibility of using bugs as drugs. But not the creepy, crawly kind. We're talking about the bacteria in our belly. Now, new research has found the stuff in our guts can protect against everything from type 1 diabetes to multiple sclerosis. Dr. Helena Popovic, uh, speaker and author, joins us to talk about it. Helena, always great to talk. Um, let's get stuck into it. these diseases and illnesses which can be treated using bugs as drugs. Yes, increasingly we're finding that our gut bacteria play a role in disorders of the brain. For instance, people with Parkinson's disease have fewer species of Prevotella. And they've also found that there are changes, patterns of changes in the gut um, nervous system that, that mimic the changes in the brain, but they occur decades before you get the symptoms of Parkinson's. And when you cut the nerve between the gut and the brain, it reduces your risk of Parkinson's. But we don't want to be cutting people's nerves, so instead we're trying to restore the missing bacteria. We're doing that with MS. We've actually found that with mice with MS, you take some, some healthy intestinal bacteria from a human and it actually suppresses the disease. And the third one is Alzheimer's disease. In this case, when you've got certain microorganisms in your gut, they can trigger the production of small proteins by our gut immune cells called cytokines. They travel to the brain, they trigger an inflammation response which can lead to Alzheimer's disease. Do these have to come from a family member or can it be from no, anybody in the public? Anyone in the public. Okay. But it's actually harder to be a poo donor than it is to be a blood donor. You can't have had antibiotics for the last you know, 12 months. You can't have an autoimmune disease. You can't have travelled to certain countries because you've got to have a very healthy gut. I'm actually too scared to offer my, my poo because I don't want someone to tell me my shit's not good enough. No, no one wants that. <laughs> Let's talk about food. Let's talk about how you can restore uh, the, the balance um, with your diet. What foods are good? Firstly, your prebiotics, uh, which are your garlic, onion, leek, artichoke, asparagus. Then your probiotics, which are foods that contain natural bacteria, healthy bacteria, fermented foods completely natural yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi, um, miso, tempeh, so, so pickled foods. But it's just as important to avoid what we call microbial disruptors. And that's chronic use of antibiotics. Try and avoid antibiotics in the first two years of life. Use them if it's life-threatening, if it's a serious infection, but not just if it's a cold. Yeah. Try and avoid antacids. They change the chemical environment of our gut and they have been linked to an increased risk of depression if you take too many antacids. Try not to get your tonsils out before the age of seven because um, our tonsils are a training ground for our good gut bugs. They teach our immune system what is a good bacteria and what is a foreign bacteria. Okay. Try not to get your appendix out. Spend time in nature. This is a great one. When we're gardening, we actually inhale a bacteria called Mycobacterium vaccae, which stimulates the production of serotonin in our gut and in our brain. So gardening is sort of naturally inhaling Prozac. Makes you happy. It does. <laughs> and exercise. Sorry, some, some people suggest that fasting is a good thing. What's your thoughts on that? Fasting is a great thing because when we fast, we promote um, the growth of a bac bacteria called Acomansia, which is associated with being slimmer because it feeds on the mucus in our gut and we need to have no food in our gut for a longer period of time to be able to feed that particular bacteria. And by fasting, it doesn't have to be, it's great if you can miss out on a day of food a week, but even just 12 hours between dinner and breakfast is a great start. Okay. So have that gap between your dinner and your breakfast. Excellent. And exercise alone can promote the growth of healthy gut bacteria and more species, which is a good thing. Excellent. Here's to good gut health. Thank, Thank you, you, Helena. Thank you. Straight ahead.